For my work, I end up taking a lot of notes, which means I build up a lot of notebooks and paper waste and paper usage because I prefer writing on pen and paper. The physical process of writing is not only quicker for me, it helps me stay organized because this is kept separate from my computer and all of my computer digital file mess because I've got a lot going on there. And it just, it, it's what I'm most comfortable with and have always worked with. The problem is I build up a lot of papers, a lot of notebooks, a lot of mess and referencing old notes and things like that becomes a problem whenever my notebooks are on a bookshelf or buried under a bed or something like that from years past. It, be, it becomes hard to keep track of everything. And I, I wanted a change. I wanted to break free from my current workflow and do something different or a little better. I also, in this video, we're tackling a couple other problems that we'll talk about later. But that sent me down the rabbit hole. This started back in 2016 or 2017 when I reviewed a small little mini laptop that was an IBM ThinkPad or Lenovo ThinkPad that my wife was using for their work that had a really nice keyboard that felt really great. It started me down this process of, or rabbit hole rather, of finding old business laptops and finding the keyboard that works for me and everyone kept recommending the older IBM and Lenovo's because that keyboard was supposedly better. And then I found one on eBay because there is an entire market of people buying and retrofitting older IBM and Lenovo ThinkPads and IdeaPads. It's, I found this one over on eBay. It's a Lenovo X201 tablet ThinkPad. It's a pin tablet. It's got, it's not a touch screen, it's a magnet pin tablet. And this got me super excited and I had to buy it right away. Then I left it untouched for a couple of years. This was essentially my dream computer back in middle school or early high school whenever I saw the Disney Channel movie Read It and Weep starring the Panabaker sisters in which there was this whole separate story being told based on what uh, she had written in her laptop but it started out with her having written it on this, you know, basically in one note on this kind of laptop and then for engineering schools and all my teachers had them in high school and everything like that this was what I always wanted. It was great product placement for Disney, even though I couldn't afford it for like 15 years later. And I finally got one, but it was super gross. The person who had it before me did not clean it up before they sent it out. It was super gross. It needed some work. It shipped with Linux Mint, which was fine, but didn't support the specific applications I wanted to use here at the time. And it needed some upgrades. And so I put it off for a couple of years. And then this Christmas, this past Christmas, I actually set to upgrade it. So I went through this whole rabbit hole that I thought would make for an interesting video in which I got a replacement pin because the plastic on the pin that came with it had started to degrade to the point that it became sticky and no amount of cleaning that off would actually help. The actual plastic was just degrading. That happens a lot. I swapped out the uh, 500 gig spinning hard drive in here for a 500 gig, uh, actually a 250 gig, I think, SSD. Swap that in there. It's only SATA 2, but it, you know, it's still faster, helps make it more responsive. Good people over at Crucial got us a RAM hookup. This specific motherboard, for whatever reason, even though the processor supports up to 16 gigs of RAM, the motherboard only supports 8 gigs of RAM. So I got Crucial to hook me up with 8 gigs of the tiny little RAM that goes in here. It has an Intel Core i5-520M processor. It is quad thread, or dual core quad thread processor. Got a new pin in it. Got a replacement battery that I thought would last longer and even replaced the IBM logo on it. And then spent quite a lot of time with some rubbing alcohol and cleaner, cleaning this bad boy up and converting it to be used as my next tablet laptop. Got a replacement pin for it, got it all set up and went to work. And the concept here was proven out to be very successful. I use OneNote, Microsoft OneNote, because that lets me sync across my computer and my laptop and my phone and all of this stuff. And it is, what has proven to be the most successful. I traditionally use Google Docs and Google Drive for all of my video scripts and things like that, but I've been moving more and more over to Microsoft OneNote in time just for keeping multiple pages together, like my notebooks. Like for example, I had all of my individual video scripts done in Google Docs. However, when I switched over to my XSplit Masterclass and was working on that, I had like 18 video scripts that I was referencing at the same time and having individual Google Doc files for that just wasn't a good workflow. Whereas having a single notebook dedicated to that in OneNote with the different like sections for each of the scripts, great workflow. So I set it up and got it set up on here. And the overall workflow is exactly what I wanted for the most part. I have the magnet pen, I can draw on it, I can make it full screen here, and I can start taking down notes of what video shots I need for B-roll, start crossing them off. I can go in here, I can start erasing stuff. 
It does not support the uh, handwriting recognition feature, which lets you write and then turns it into text, so I can't use that. But overall, this was a pretty good workflow. But then I started to run into the hangups that modern tablets and modern tablet technology kind of alleviate with this kind of workflow. And that even with the new replacement battery, the battery life is abysmal. I, because there is no kind of low power sleep mode that modern tablets have, I just lock the screen, which only works sometimes. These tablet buttons don't work all the time. I just lock the screen, set it down, and then it goes to sleep on its own. And then I have to wake it up. And then I have to log back in, wait for it to wake all the way up. And it takes forever to do that and then get going. So it's slower to quickly use the jot something down. It drains battery. So I'm charging it at least once a day. You know, as soon as I go to use it or half the time it'll be asleep, I go to pick it up and it's completely dead. It takes forever to unlock the pin distance, which was common for the time. But, you know, you can see there's a gap between the glass and the actual screen surface. And there's quite a bit of lag with the writing. The refresh rate on the screen's a little odd. It says it's 60 hertz, but there's on some cameras, there's like a diagonal refresh rate for the screen. And whenever like the login screen pops up, it's clearly very jittery. I don't know if it's just because it's old or the refresh rate is weird. Lots of little things that I thought I'd be able to deal with just to make this literally just a paper notebook replacement that wound up being fairly frustrating. So I decided to go in a different direction with this. So instead, I did something I never thought I would end up doing, and I bought an iPad Pro. And apparently it's the new generation that just came out, so I'm actually having launch coverage like everyone else, which is strange. What, what, what channel are we watching here? Uh, I picked it up with a few accessories because not only does this solve, theoretically, the tablet problem that I've been talking about here, this actually solves a few other problems. I mentioned at the start of the video that I had a few problems that today's video would be solving. This solves some of the other ones, in that I'm just going to go ahead and start getting this unboxed here. Not only did I want that, you know, notebook replacement tablet experience, but I've also really struggled with my relationship with laptops over the years. I am not a laptop person. I have the only, like, not that I'm going to be traveling anytime soon, but the only work, you know, travel laptop that I have that can do video editing is... A big 17 inch like eight pound behemoth that was really hell to carry with me to CES and so you know I've I've always been on the lookout for something that might replace that as well turns out the solution that I wanted that tackles all of these problems is right here so you get the iPad this is the iPad Pro this is the 256 gig model gen 2 it's got a bunch of different camera lenses Again, I had no idea this was literally updating right as I was making the decision to do this, so that's pretty cool. You get a tiny bit of paperwork, some big-ass Apple stickers. That's fine. And then you get your USB-C and USB-C charger. I really love that they are, they are on USB-C at this point. Makes my life a lot easier. Now, I went with the 11-inch model. Honestly, I thought that was going to be way too small, and I was kind of nervous because the 12-inch was just too expensive. I couldn't justify it. So I thought I'd just make the 11 inch work, but this thing is big. Like I am glad I went with the 11 inch. And there we have it. My first launch, close to launch time, new Apple product that I've probably ever owned. <laughs> I have only owned a few Apple products in my life in the first place, uh, being a couple iPods that we got that were new in box, but weren't probably, you know, the latest and greatest hot stuff that just came out. And then I had an iPhone 4 that I never ended up using, or 4S that I bought in like 2016 to use for Anchor, because Anchor only supported iOS at the time, and then never did anything with that. And then I had my 2013 MacBook Pro that I got in 2018, that is now my wife's laptop for now. So, this is pretty cool. I don't normally get to do this. Now I picked up a smart folio to go with it for now, as the, key, the new Magic Keyboard and Trackpad thing that they're pushing is not even available yet, but having heard more about it, it's gonna be like $300, and that just seems ridiculous to me. And so I'll probably get the previous generation as normal, if I can, if I can make it work with this, the normal uh, Magic Keyboard without the trackpad and just use a wireless mouse with it because I don't care about having a trackpad specifically, I just wanted mouse support, and that is way too expensive for a keyboard cover. But this will at least keep it relatively protected for now. I love the magnetic feel. I've never actually used an iPad. I've used a few different older gen tablets 
a little too far after their life, mainly floor models of like Galaxy Tab 7s and I had my Surface RT, but nothing of this caliber. So this is impressive. I also got a few accessories since this will be basically my laptop replacement and my tablet notebook replacement here. So I've got the Apple Pencil, of course. That's the whole point of this. We can go ahead and get that open. There would be literally no point in getting this without the pencil. I don't know how people do Apple unboxings these days, but here you go. It's pencil. Now, I believe this attaches to the iPad somehow. Is it really just... Yeah, it just sticks there. Huh. Wish it wasn't white. It doesn't match anything else because I've got the space, space gray action going on here in the blue, but it's fine. It's Apple. And then I've got a few uh, USB-C dongles because hashtag that dongle life. We've got the headphone jack. I've got a multi-port adapter here, which has HDMI, uh, a USB plug, as well as charger pass-through, which is pretty cool. That will save me a lot of hassle when it comes to screen capturing, because I'm going to be doing iOS tutorials and things like that with that now. Got a basic USB adapter for hooking up external hard drives and the like, as well as an SD card reader. So I'm not even going to bother opening these right now, but I have these available should I desire to actually turn this into a full laptop experience. And then I believe... This folio, folio kind of turns into a kickstand as well. I'll figure that out in a moment. Let's get this boy powered on if I can. Now I can already tell the dust and fingerprints on the screen are going to drive me nuts, but that's nothing compared to what's on the screen of the other one. So I can already tell this pencil feels a lot better than the pen on my other tablet. Oh man, it's got that high refresh rate screen. That feels really good. Quick start, bring your current iPhone or iPad near this iPad to sign in and set up. Who the hell do you think I am? So for the most part, from what I've seen, there were some people who got this early. Uh, specs wise, this is not any significantly faster than the previous generation iPad Pro. It's like slightly faster, but not significantly. But it does have the new LiDAR uh, mixed reality camera sensor tech, as well as new camera sensors or new cameras on the actual thing. It has the multi-camera array instead of just a single camera. And then it has some cool high refresh rate modes as well, which is pretty neat. We're setting up Face ID here. So I will say first impressions are good. The pencil is just up and working automatically with this thing, which I was not entirely expecting. And that is one of the cool things I liked about the tablet laptop setup I had going was that the pen did not require batteries or anything like that. It was just magnet based and worked out of the box. This does as well, as far as I can tell. Really, really like that. Quite the beefy selfie camera here. I noticed there's a lot of emphasis put on the cameras now, but like, do I want to be that person taking iPad photos with my, or photos with my iPad? I don't know. That just looks ridiculous, but it might be easier to stabilize. It does video as well. I wonder what the video specs are. I don't know that it gives me options like on, I don't know <laughs> if I have a way of seeing what the specs are just like this. We'll just take some video and see what happens. Is it taking 16 by 10 video? Because this is not like a 16 by 9 screen. I don't know. So yeah, I'm going to get this set up and running. Actually, we can go ahead and see if they have... They should have OneNote in the App Store, and I should be able to literally just swap in place my workflow, even on the same worksheet, which would be really cool. There are, of course, other apps that people recommend on the iPad. I think Notability was one of them that I heard of. It costs nine bucks, though, and OneNote syncs across all my devices so I can use it on my desktop. So I can sit here and take notes, as I was doing earlier, taking notes of what B-roll shots I needed for a review, and then take this with me, and then bring it back to the desktop and reference which shots I captured when, and make my life a lot easier. We're going to sign in here with our Microsoft account, of course. And just like that, I am able to pick up exactly where I left off in terms of the written notes I had on the other tablet, and thanks to the screen to aspect, you know, screen to body ratio with these thin bezels, I essentially have the same amount of writing space here. If I can hide this little side panel here, actually, there's a full screen mode. There we go. Yeah, we pretty much have exactly the same ratio here in terms of screen size. I can pull up the pencil. This is a test, and we get significantly thinner fonts, and I can start writing immediately. Hello from real iPad. Cool. So ultimately, I have the same kind of experience. I've got my iPad here. 
it's roughly the same screen space as what was available on the tablet, especially in terms of usability. It's a lot quicker. It has a standard lock feature where I can just lock it and very quickly unlock it. And with face unlock, I can unlock it as well. My only frustration is half the time it doesn't like, I don't swipe up all the way in order to fully unlock it. Come, come on. Yeah, th this is gonna drive me mad. There we go, worked that time. But overall, it's gonna be much more responsive. The writing workflow is exactly the same, but improved all of those quirks of the gap on the screen, the latency, the precision, the pin on that is not very precise. So my handwriting ends up a little thick and not super great. This is a lot thinner, a lot more precise, a lot more true to my handwriting and easier to read. Has a lot more of those modern features as well as a much better battery that I was immediately missing in that workflow. Plus, this gets to act as a laptop replacement for me. I can do video editing on this. I can shoot some video on this because the cameras are actually really good. I can do photo editing and make cool social media posts that I haven't really been able to tolerate doing on my phone. I can write emails on this. I can do a lot of stuff. I will want to get the keyboard replacement or the keyboard folio for this instead of the normal one ASAP. But I feel like this was a good buy. My first Apple product that's fairly modern. I do have a Hackintosh now as well. Uh, don't really have that fully set up in a real way to use it because I was just using it for tutorials, but I might connect these two together and see how I can get them to cooperate for Mac related things. I'm not converting converting to Apple by any chance, but it's been a pretty, pretty positive experience so far and it's the new generation one. So hopefully this was somewhat interesting to you just to see. I think it's pretty cool. Like I, I saw the original tablet wave and didn't understand what anyone used it for. And even people who tried to explain it, I was just like, it seems pointless. You have a phone, you have a computer, it's all you need. Why do you just need a tiny thing to watch TV on instead of your TV or your other devices? Then the iPad Pro came out and I saw some workflows for it. And a lot of channels were really trying to push the creative angle and what they could do creatively with it. And again, I just didn't really see the point when I had computers that I use. But this is a specific workflow point where I could finally justify it for myself in that this is thinner than most notebooks that I was already writing in. It has infinite pages of notebook storage. So it replaces my notebooks. It replaces my laptops. Should I ever be able to travel again, baby and COVID-19 allowing, it'll be much more of a travel workhorse of a video editor laptop. I will be doing more videos on that soon. I can stream from it. I can do some really cool stuff with this that I can't do with the little Lenovo tablet or with a normal tablet. And I'm pretty stoked. I'll have more coverage coming soon. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education. I'll have a whole streaming video on this coming very soon as well. And I'll see you next time. This has been weird. I feel dirty talking about Apple on this channel.